Deep is evidently down in there, maybe down inside the earth, and, and all of a sudden the fountains broke open and stuff came out. I'm sure this implies lava and, and, and water, water coming up. Um, also perhaps super concentrations of, of extremely hot brines of, of salts and minerals. Those fountains were breaking open and, and spewing their stuff out onto the, onto the land surface. When it says those were broken open, uh, that word in scripture is the same word that's used for the earthquake uh, events, the, the, the earth opening up. Um, breaking open has to do with tectonic events. Think with me for a moment what would happen today if there's an earthquake on the bottom of the ocean or a submarine landslide, something like that. The result of those things is what we call, sometimes we call it a tidal wave. The technical word is a tsunami. A tidal wave is a shock wave that's set up by this event down on the bottom of the ocean, and this shock wave is actually passing through the water. It's, it's screaming at several hundred miles an hour, this shock wave passing through the water. It's not a water wave, it's actually an energy wave passing through the water. And as long as the ocean is deep, you don't even notice it, even if you're out on the open ocean. But when the land surface gets shallow, the energy in that water actually begins to pick up the water and, and picks it up into, a, into a, a wall of water, maybe several hundred feet high, and then slams into the continents. The Bible says that all around the world, on one particular day, all the fountains of the great deep broke open. Hmm. Now, there's some geological inferences we can draw from that, too. Think about 500-foot walls of water slamming into the continents. The Bible says those fountains were opening and closing and pulsating for 150 days before they were finally closed. We've got to get out of our minds the idea that the flood was like we see it depicted in the children's books sometimes. You know, the, the picture of the houseboat with a giraffe sticking its neck out, you know, riding along on a lake on a Sunday afternoon. That's not the way the flood was. Think about 500-foot walls of water slamming into the continents for, for 150 days. Think of somebody opening the dam up in heaven and the water coming down. Think of mud flows. Think of submarine landslides. Think of the incredibly energetic events. The world was conquered by the waters of the flood and perished. And when we start thinking about the flood like that, then I think our minds are in the, in the ballpark of thinking about the flood as it really was. We don't have the flood to study today. The Bible tells us there'll never be another flood like that one. But we can look at the, the rock units and the fossils that were laid down by the flood and try to imagine the sort of catastrophe that it must have been. The Bible tells us that that first episode began with the, um, with the opening of the fountains and the windows. And then those waters prevailed on the earth for, another, for about six months before they began to drain off. At the end of that six months, uh, Noah's Ark landed on, on the mountains of Ararat, and then for the next six months, while the ark was up there, remember he was sending out the ravens and doves, and, and finally the waters drained off to where life at the bottom of the mountain was, was possible, and they, they exited and came on down the mountain. One of the questions that people always ask about the flood, in fact, this is one of the, the most asked questions. Where did all the water come from to cover the mountains? Is there enough water on earth to cover the mountains? I mean, now we know that the Himalayas, uh, Mount Everest is over 28,000 feet high, and oh my goodness, how in the world do we get all of these mountains covered by water? Good question. I'm glad you asked. But there is a good answer. There's always an answer. If you're willing to study and believe, there's always a good answer for these questions. Today, the oceans cover over two-thirds of the globe, and it's also true that the oceans are much deeper than the continents are high. The oceans are very, very deep, and the, and the continents, well, there, there are some places where the mountains are high, but even the highest mountain is not even half as high as the deepest ocean is deep. The oceans are incredibly deep. In fact, if you took the earth, if you, if you took the earth and smoothed the land completely to a smooth sphere, then put the water back on, it would cover the earth to a depth of about a mile and a half. I mean, there's plenty of water on the earth. It's also very important to recognize that our modern-day mountains are not the mountains that had to be covered by the flood. Those mountains, like the Alps, like the Himalayas, like the uh, Appalachians, like the Rocky Mountains, like the major mountain chains of the world, those are all made up of sedimentary rock, fossil-bearing rock that was laid down at the bottom of the flood ocean and then has since been buckled up in the mountains. Noah's flood did not have to cover the Himalaya mountains.
Noah's flood deposited the Himalaya mountains and then they were buckled up. It would be difficult, it certainly would be difficult to have a flood that would cover the Himalaya mountains. I suppose a, a, a meteorite, a, a comet blasting into the ocean could set up a wave that would wash over the Himalaya mountains, but um, to make the water stand at that level, it is, it, that would be impossible, I suspect. We get the impression from Scripture that the world before the flood was one of less relative topography. The mountains weren't so high, the oceans weren't so deep as they are today. And then as the flood came, it laid down all these different layers of mud full of dead things. And those layers of mud eventually rose up to form the mountain chains. As the flood waters receded, these mountains were poking up out of the water and then the continents were, were uplifted. But uh, those mountains did not have to be covered by, by the flood waters. They are sedimentary rock laid down by Noah's flood. The book Noah's Ark and the Lost World is a book that I wrote uh, ostensibly for children. Huh. It's about my search for Noah's Ark, but in this book are, are also some very good um, discussions of where the water came from and how do you get all the animals on board the ark. And, and another question that's, that is corollary to where did the water come from is the question where did the water go at the end of the flood? How in the world do you stop the flood once you start it? Well, I think there's some good answers for that now. Uh, now the, the oceans contain the water. The oceans, that's where the water is. There's plenty of water on, on the earth. It's just been distributed. The, the topography is distributed so that it's, it's contained in the oceans. This is very much like, you know, on Sunday, after, Sunday noon meal, you have mashed potatoes and gravy, right? If you have a pile of mashed potatoes on your plate and you pour the gravy on top of it, all the gravy runs off and gets in your peas, right? I mean, that's what happens to gravy. It, but if you take your spoon and you scoop out a potato dam, a scoop in the potatoes and put your gravy in the potatoes, it'll hold it right there. It's not a matter of not enough gravy to cover the potatoes. You've got plenty of gravy to cover the potatoes, but if you scoop out a potato dam, you've got a place to keep the gravy, and you'll hold it there. The same sort of thing with the flood. There's plenty of water on board the earth. It's just that the topography is wrong. Before the flood, we suspect that the mountains weren't so high and the oceans weren't so deep. We can, I think, demonstrate that by the fact that the mountains today are made up of sedimentary rock, those layers of rock that were laid down at the bottom of the flood ocean. They must have been raised up later in the flood as God called the flood to an end. The Bible tells us after 150 days of, uh, of flood activity that the windows of heaven were stopped and the, and the fountains of the, of the great deep were, were stopped. And at that point, God was beginning to prepare the world then for life after the flood. Somehow, in order to end Noah's flood, he's got to scoop out these deep and wide ocean basins because that's where the water is now. Once those ocean basins were scooped out, then the waters could drain into the, into the ocean and the continents would be uplifted and, and drained of that water and life could be possible there once again. There are two possible ways, I suppose, to, to deepen and widen those ocean basins. One would be uh, splitting the continents apart. We talk about continental drift, uh, plate tectonics. Keep in mind that plate tectonics is a modern observation. We do know that the Earth's crust is broken up into plates. Whether or not they were once together and, and separated, that is a reconstruction of the past, but I think that's a reconstruction that's compatible with what Scripture has to say. Um, there is indication that the continents were once together and, and have split apart. We don't have the time involved for it that the uniformitarian would like to use, but uh, I'm convinced that in the latter six months of the flood, something happened to deep and widen the ocean basins, and it may be that the continents were split apart, leaving a deep and wide ocean basin in between, or perhaps somehow the continents uh, rose differentially to the, to the ocean basins, perhaps by the uh, principle of isostasy, which, which talks about the lightweight continental rock beginning to, to rise relative to the denser oceanic rock. But some mechanism must have been employed by God to deepen and widen those ocean basins, allowing the waters to drain in and draining the land then. Based on what Scripture has to say, we're then able to make some predictions, some predictions in geology. If what the Bible has to say is right, then when I look at the rocks, I ought to see some things. I ought to see the results of it. We can't see the flood, but we ought to be able to see the results of that flood if it really happened. 
and in fact if it didn't if it did happen 